Less than five four brings on, guess what? More identities. Okay? So three new sets of identities to add on to. And so you see here we have double angle identities, power reducing identities, and half angle identities. And so we're going to practice different ways we can use those. Um, double angle identities, these are called double angle identities because you'll notice they all have a 2 with your variable. Whether you call it 2u, 2x, 2 theta, they all have a 2 there. And they are other things that are equivalent to these. And you'll notice what the identities are equal to, they do not have 2s with the variables. And so it's how do you get rid of a double angle so you don't have a 2 with the angle. Power reducing, sine squared, cosine squared, tangent squared. Power reducing means, okay, how can I rewrite this without the squared? And you'll notice what they're equal to. They have the double angles back, but the powers are gone. Half angle identities. You'll notice half angles. It's the variable divided by two. Okay. These are all identities we can use to substitute out in certain situations. And we're going to practice using all of these somehow or another at the bottom. Okay. Now, we'll very briefly start looking at number one. It should sound a little familiar. If sine of theta is four-fifths and cosine of theta is less than zero, then find sine of two theta, cosine of two theta, and tangent of two theta. So right? Okay. So it's asking us to find sine of two theta, so on and so forth, which does mean we're going to be using our double angle identities, yes? In order to find these values of our double angle identities, for instance, what do we have to know to find sine of two theta? We're going to have to know sine of theta and cosine of theta, yes? Did they give us all that information here? <coughs> no. So first thing I might have us do is we need to find just our plain basic sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, what are you provided here? Sine is 4 over 5, four over five and cosine is less than. less than 0. Well, we know sine. How can I find cosine and tangent? Well, we know that. Yeah. yeah, can we think Sokotoa, make a triangle? Let's go back to our chapter four ways. Now, before I draw that triangle, what quadrant am I going to be in? Sine is positive, and that means that positive. cosine is negative. Cos or sine is positive, cosine is negative. What quadrant does that put me in? If sine is positive and cosine is negative. Two. Is a quadrant two problem? Yes? yes. So if I think quadrant two, I'm going to draw a little triangle here. Now, as I draw this triangle, remember, my triangle, my right triangle, the angle of interest is at the origin, and it's on the x-axis, right? Every time I put that angle at the origin and on the x-axis, my right angle is over. Sine is four-fifths. So what did we know from sine is four-fifths? Okay. Due to Sokotoa, we know that four is my opposite. Five is my hypotenuse. What about my other side? This is a really common one. It's going to be negative 3. Let's do 4, 5. Okay. So you can use Pythagorean theorem. Or it is technically one of our, it is a special right triangle. Or a, what do I want to say, Pythagorean triple. But 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. Or what? A squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. A squared plus 16 equals 25. 25 minus 16 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. However, Doug said negative. Why negative? Because it's going to the left. Got to fix that clock. Okay. We will talk about how to find these tomorrow.